So welcome everyone to A Course in Miracles Satsang. You are most welcome here and it's beautiful to join everyone. It's so lovely to join in this divine grace, coming to, to be willing to turn up to a talk, coming to be willing to do something that shifts our perception in some way. So he has this beautiful message in the course, every little step clears away a little bit of the darkness. So even when um, we go through periods of feeling completely overwhelmed in fear, and we think, I can't do anything with the Course in Miracles. I'm so overwhelmed with fear today. What's happening in those periods is that is when you need to turn to the Course's teachings more than ever. Now that is wrong in itself because we need to turn to it all the time. But when I say more than ever, I mean that it's very easy to feel full of fear, overwhelmed, and just think, I can't do it. And yet what happens is you just stay stuck in the problem. The problem is the ego, and the problem the problem's not so much the ego. The problem is believing it, being with it, living with it, being overwhelmed with it, going to bed with it, living in you know, just this whole feeling of helplessness, anxiety, depression, illness, pain. He is given us an answer. So each small step, just doing a lesson, clears away a little bit of the darkness. So I encourage you when you hit those periods of darkness, of overwhelm, that you don't leave the course's teachings behind. Do something. Do just even if you say, I can't read a lesson, just try to read the words of the lesson, the, the, the description of the, just the line of the lesson. Just do that. Now, in my days when I felt that overwhelm, that feeling of just being in the ego, I would just go to I rest in God and I would just repeat it to myself as much as I could remember throughout the day. After a while, I started to um, ask or sort of this feeling of, you know, can you help me? And I would get another, another phrase or just a word. Sometimes I would just get the word peace and I would just repeat that. Now, in the course, he says you can ask for a word or a phrase or to come in silence. And what that means is you might get a feeling or an idea. To, I need to meditate. I need to just quieten my mind. So these are the ways that he helps us when we are in overwhelm. So it's really, I just wanted to get this start of this talk to help you remember when you wake up in the morning and it tends to be sometimes the ego's more in its viciousness in the mornings or at night when you're meant to go to sleep <clears throat> some people have it more in the morning some have it more at night and during the night it doesn't matter it's the same remedy perfect love plus out fear so when you're repeating something from the course, it's just bringing in that little bit of sense of God's love. Even if it's 20%, the fear will reduce. And as you go along, you'll get used to calling in and choosing for something else. We have to make that choice ourselves. We have to remember and say, I've got to do something to change this. But, it's, but we don't actually do the changing. What we do is ask for help. And you might receive this feeling of going to a particular book 
or a picture of a person might come into your mind and you think, actually, I really feel like calling that person. Or you might get a picture of yourself walk, going for a walk. Or you might, um, for me, you know, I had all these things coming in. So the answer was never really the same answer. Sometimes I would feel this guidance to do a Byron Katie worksheet. Sometimes I would feel this inner feeling of to meditate and to quieten my mind. So we all have things that we've got from the past that he can bring in when we need it. And we need to trust that answer. It's always something different. It could be a word. You, you know, sometimes I would just get a word and I would repeat it. And it was amazingly helpful. And the next day I tried to use that word and it just didn't work. And I'd get another word. Sometimes I'd wake up and I'd hear a song in my mind. And, the, and, the, and when I looked and, and I realized the actual line and the words of the song, they were helpful. So I would sing that. And some, I know some other course students have said they like used to sing little ditties, which is like just little, like a nursery rhyme or something sort of quite simple. The main message that I'm sort of giving here is when you're in overwhelm, don't stay there. Don't think I can't do anything. Oh, I'm in fear. I'm in overwhelm. The other thing that's really important is to, if you can, you don't have to do this, but this was what I was guided to do, is when I was fearful, rather than saying to myself, I'm in fear, he asked me to say to myself, I'm listening to the ego. And what happened was that helped me identify the cause of the upset. Because when you say, oh, I'm just full of fear, I just, just feel really unwell today, I just can't get up, you're not identifying what the cause of the upset is. You may not be free of the upset, but you're identifying more and more. So I would sometimes when I was in fear, I would just, and I had these sayings written down and stuck up on my wall at home. So I would remember and I'd walk past and I'd be like, I'm listening to the ego. So it helps me identify, okay, when I'm feeling like this, I'm listening to the ego and then I need to ask for help. So uh, that's forgiveness. Forgiveness is a change of perception and it's up to us to ask for that help. So you can do it in any way you like. We all have our unique ways, but for me, it was Holy Spirit. I give you these thoughts, this idea about whatever it was going on in my mind, whatever, however I felt. You don't have to do it perfectly. You don't have to even identify specifically what it is. It could be just a sense of doom and gloom. Okay, that's all I'm identifying with today. Okay, Holy Spirit, this sense of doom and gloom, I give it to you. I hand it over. I don't want it anymore. So you really let go. You decide you don't want it, you let it go. You feel this really deep feeling of, I don't want it. I let it go. And then the second step is, help me see this differently. Help me have another perception. Help me see my brother differently. Help me see this situation differently. Help me see myself differently. Whatever it is, have this feeling. And then the third step, is when the answer comes in and that's nothing to do with us. We've done what we've done, what he's asked us to do. He's asked us to let go of the ego and ask for the correction. I want the miracle instead of this grievance. However the words are, that's the whole crux of forgiveness. We want to, when we're, we're, we're remembering not to be stuck in the ego. So the more and more we can identify the cause is the ego, is us listening to the ego, being interested in it. You can't, when you're caught up in the ego, you cannot even see that you're caught, that you, there's a you and the ego. You're enmeshed in it. You're so immersed in it. And that happens. 
And but gradually, gradually, as you continue doing forgiveness, there's this drawing away, there's this remembering that I have some part of my mind that is the listening to the ego. But at the start, when we're really enmeshed in the ego, we need help. We need a lot of help and we need to remember. So anything you can do to help yourself remember, you know, put reminders on your phone, stickers around your wall, write things on glass around your house. It doesn't matter. Whatever helps you to be constantly reminding yourself of something to do with the truth throughout the day the more the better and then there's also um, as you do your inner work with the course you also need times to let that sink in so that might be times where you'll have quietness where you might go for a walk and you just look around at nature or you do something like you're coloring in or creating something or even cooking a meal where your mind's focused on something else because that's the time when all those teachings drop in a lot of the time I had illumination like in the shower out of, out on walks sitting quietly in the backyard <clears throat> it was because my mind I just made time for just resting and there was like little light bulbs little aha moments going off so we need to have both it's no use reading the course and listening to teachers and going to groups and talking with Course in Miracles friends and leaving no room for the illumination. <clears throat> it's really like when we're listening to, like even in these groups, listening to me, we're eating the food, the teachings, and then the digestion has to go on. So you don't eat all day. You, do, you eat at times, you'll feel when to do the eating, the listening, the reading. And then you need to let that digest. You need the Holy Spirit working in your mind, linking things up, showing you, bringing in this awareness. And it's going to be that your mind is starting to awaken. And it all comes from that calling of your heart that I want to know God, I want to know this love, because God is love, God is this infinite love, and that is who we are, and you can still experience yourself in a body, but not be identified with it so much, and have the experience of God in your mind, and keep that feeling of peace and a tranquil mind, and whether it's a reflection of heaven or heaven, as he says, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. It's beautiful and it's worth the effort to make, to go through the fear that the ego brings up. So the ego is like a big puff of nothingness. He's like, the ego is like when you go on a ghost train at one of the fairs and all the skeletons pop out at you. And they're nothing, but as a child, you're fearful of them. And then when you go through as an adult, if you go with one of your children, you laugh at it and you think, gosh, couldn't they come up with a better, more realistic, scary thing? And that's exactly how we're going to look at the ego. You're going to watch it and you're going to laugh at it trying to go boo. And that's all the ego is trying to do to you. It's trying to scare you. And as you're a child on that train, you're scared. What's going to pop out at me? What's going to come? And you're fearful as you're on the little ghost train. And all the things pop out, the lights flash. Now, if you went in there during the day where it's not dark, it wouldn't be scary. So what happens is we have to look at the ego to see it's not scary. So if you were someone that worked on the ghost train and you were setting the little skeletons up so they would pop out at certain parts where the little train goes past, you would not be scared of it. But the little child coming in doesn't know what's going to happen and it thinks, you know, something's going to hurt me. 
going to be scared by this. So our job is to look at all the little boos that the ego says. The little boo. What about this? What about this scary thing that's going to happen? Oh, and so when you wake up in the morning, the ego's like the little skeleton jumping out. Oh, be careful. You might lose your job today. What will you do without your money? So you've got to look. You've got to face it. Can't turn around and go, oh, my God. Whoa, gosh, I can't lose my job. You have to turn around and say, okay, Holy Spirit, show me that this is just a silly little skeleton jumping out at me like boo and he's just going to laugh the ego away and you know how he says the ego is nothing that's what it happens when you go on that ghost train with your kids or your grandkids as you get older and you're just laughing at you say this is just so pathetic <laughs> because that's what you go you're going to look at the ego that way I'd say, come on, come up with a better story. I am as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. Say whatever you like. Death is not real. And you're going to hold really strong in that truth. So stay, uh, apply something when you have. Um, the ego now this is our whole journey is to look at the ego it's not about i can't look at the ego oh the ego oh the ego i'm looking away i'm looking away no this journey is about facing it the ego is the ego is saying something you face it you don't run away from it he says in lesson 333 conflict can't be evaded it can't be called another name. You have to face it with the Holy Spirit. So one of the when it says facing it, it means looking together at it. Now you can do forgiveness like um, sometimes I did forgiveness where I didn't sort of do that, um, putting it sort of on an altar or in a closet and closing the door sort of thing or throwing it in the garbage truck and watching the garbage truck go down the street. You know, like, here's my rubbish that I've got in my mind today. Take it away. You know, I'm going to start now repeat the lesson to myself and remain in that beautiful, those beautiful thoughts for the day. Sometimes I would say to Jesus or the Holy Spirit, look at this with me. So there is other times where we are getting a picture in our mind of something really horrible that the ego brings in. So it's the same answer to everything that we have in our mind. It might sort of look a little, the ego's fears can maybe seem a little different, but the answer is something that shifts your perception, brings peace, brings understanding, brings an experience of some sort. So we're seeking the miracle. And when it says I'm entitled to miracles, he means you have got the miracle in your mind. You have got the Holy Spirit. You have got access to Jesus and the Holy Spirit like everyone else. You, you, you need to trust in that. You need to develop the trust that there's, no, there's not a special person that's got special access to the Holy Spirit and Jesus. No, anyone that has is listening, all they've done is dedicated themselves to listening. And so can you. We all can. So anyone that's listening and hearing the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. They're all symbols in our mind that help us. So it's important to let go of this idea that there's some special few he says that the ego, that the Holy Spirit is talking to us and wants to help. It is, our, it is part of our mind and will feel like our voice because it's in our mind. So, and we have that unique journey in that he will help us in whatever comes through, whatever we're asking. So today's talk is uh, going to be around 
um, we're going to start going through the song of prayer. Um, and we'll work through the song of prayer book each week. So today we're starting at the top of the ladder, at the beginning of the song of prayer, where he talks about true prayer. He's then going to go into all the other aspects of further down the ladder, the ideas of how we pray in different ways. So when I do the meditation, it's probably going to be a very confronting meditation today. I'm going to give you two options, but I'm hoping you'll choose for the first one. That as usual, there's no guilt if, you, if you're not ready to do the first option. You can always choose because there will be a time when we're ready to really surrender. So we're going to be doing a surrendering meditation today. So um, Shannon is going to be helping me with the reading today. Oh, I can't see her on the screen. Uh, oh, there you are. <laughs> so let me just have a little sip before we start. This is beautiful, this song of prayer. It really is. It's such a lovely pamphlet. It's very easy, but very, very direct. So uh, you probably have to be a student of the course for a few years to really get this. You, I don't think you could start with this song of prayer pamphlet. Because um, it'd probably be uh, most like, I mean, I'm not saying you couldn't. But it, it brings in all the course's teachings and sort of, so this is, uh, he's, he's talking about um, the song, the song that we're going to be in with God and where we are now that we've just forgotten. And I just want to say before I start reading is that this is, I work, my mind went into this song um as part of my mind training and it was and it's so, it's so beautiful when I heard the song and felt myself there um I I hadn't really read this song of prayer I don't think before then or didn't sort of forgot about it and I know it it's alluded to in the course about this song this song and I really feel deeply that this is the end of the journey in this being in the song with God. I, if there's some other deeper past this, let me know, because for me, it is just the most glorious, beautiful song. And it's just so lovely. Now it's not on for me all the time. It's, it's, um, I live in peace but what happens is when I lie my head on the pillow at night, I just allow the song and all I do is uh, go into gratitude. And as soon as I feel this gratitude welling up, the song is on. So I can do it, but I, it's not, it's like, um, uh, it's always there because it's the peace that permeates my mind in time being in timelessness so you can be in timelessness and also seemingly in time so what happens is you get used to sort of the paradox of being in the world but not of it and it takes sort of like a maturing over time after the initial awakening to mature into this and hold it so you can be really helpful because you're holding both aspects in your mind. But this song of prayer, this song with God is really um, where we all are and we're never left. And yet here we seem to be, you know, looking at a computer screen and listening to someone talk. And at sometimes when you're really in the thick of the ego, 
it could feel impossible that you are in a song of beautiful, glorious song of love and gratitude with God and never left. So we have to work to remove all those blocks um, to hear the song again. And actually, we are the song. I know it sounds strange. It's very different to listening to a song here and feeling good about the song and dancing to the song and singing and being happy. That's really nice. That when you get to the song of prayer, um, it is like you, your individuality has dropped away and you are everything, your every note, every uh, beautiful um, vocal music that's coming. So it's really like angels. I've never heard any music here that uh, is, is like the song of prayer. But some come sort of close. Sometimes people put out sort of angelic music. We had that uh, A Thousand Angels or A Hundred Thousand Angels song about a month or so ago. And that was really beautiful. Like, but the song of prayer, is, is the song in when we're with God is just so beautiful. So I'm here to help you and encourage you and motivate you to work towards letting go of all the things of the world that we value and only value God and his love and the song and he's singing that it's not like a male voice or anything it's just that you feel this song it's just so beautiful it's like it's everywhere and and you know that everybody's there not as bodies, but all of us are there. Everyone's there. We're all singing. It's like, it's like the whole world in a choir together. And the love is just like the divine love, gratitude, but no bodies. Like you're not looking at people as bodies. You're just in this beautiful song and you can feel this creator. Um, something about, it's like um, blessing you and loving you and then you're loving back and this gratitude and love is one it's the same love but there's like a song and music and voices around it and then there's also um it's just this divine love and gratitude and so that's what we'll we'll try to get to today because why not why not reach for the highest you may not be ready, but it doesn't hurt to know about it and desire it. And even if today's talk makes you desire there a little bit more, then I've done my job in encouraging you and letting you know that there's nothing to fear in living in God's love. This, I'm still here, I'm still eating and sleeping and talking and going to the toilet and doing all the normal things, nothing changes for the body. But the whole mind is outside. It's just living in this beautiful love. So um, just so you know, there's nothing to fear. Look at all the people, look at all the teachers that you respect. They're not looking crazy. You will not go crazy through the teachings of the Course. You will, you will just love and bless your family more because you'll see your children and your parents and your siblings as their true self. And literally everyone that turns up, anyone you see, you will just know they are the Christ self and nothing else it will be in your awareness. So you don't have to practice seeing the Christ anymore. You'll know it. And that is knowledge. Okay, so let's get into the uh, the true the prayer. So I'm hoping to read down to the end of true prayer and then doing the meditation. So Shannon, would you like to start reading paragraph one? Thank you. 
Sure. Thanks, Kate. Prayer is the greatest gift with which God blessed his son at his creation. It was then what it is to become. The single voice, creator and creation share. The song the son sings to the father, who returns the thanks that offers him unto the son. Endless the harmony and endless to the joyous concord of the love they give forever to each other. And in this, creation is extended. God gives thanks to his extension in his son. His son gives thanks for his creation in the song of his creating in his father's name. The love they share is what all prayer will be throughout eternity when time is done. For such it was before time seemed to be. Okay. <laughs> to you who are in time a little while, Prayer takes the form that best will suit your need. You have but one, which is one need. <laughs> when God created one, sorry, what God created one must recognize its oneness. That's the need. And rejoice that what illusions seemed to separate is one forever in the mind of God. Prayer now must be the means by which God's son leaves separate goals and separate interests by and turns in holy gladness to the truth of union in his father and himself. Lay down your dreams, you holy son of God, and rising up as God created you, dispense with idols and remember him. Prayer will sustain you now and bless you as you lift your heart to him in rising song that reaches higher and then higher still until both high and low have disappeared. Faith in your goal will grow and hold you up as you ascend the shining stairway to the lawns of heaven and the gate of peace. For this is prayer, and here salvation is. This is the way. It is God's gift to you. So this is the section called True Prayer. Prayer is a way offered by the Holy Spirit to reach God. It is not merely a question or an entreaty. Now the description or the definition of entreaty means an earnest or humble request, a plea or appeal. So true prayer is not a... Um, a plea or appeal. It is a way offered by the Holy Spirit to reach God. It cannot succeed until you realize that it, the prayer, asks for nothing. How else could it serve its purpose? It is impossible to pray for idols and hope to reach God. True prayer must avoid the pitfall of asking to entreat, which is uh, pleading for God. So we must, when we move into true prayer, we must avoid these pitfalls of asking God to do things in the world or to heal our mind or anything like that. Ask rather 
to receive what is already given, to accept what is already there. You have been told to ask the Holy Spirit for the answer to any specific problem and that you will receive a specific answer if such is your need. You have also been told that there is only one problem and one answer. In prayer, this is not contradictory. There are decisions to make here and they must be made whether they be illusions or not. You cannot be asked to accept answers which are beyond the level of need that you can recognize. Therefore, it is not the form of the question that matters, nor how it is asked. The form of the answer, if given by God, will suit your need as you see it. This is merely an echo of the reply of his voice. The real sound is always a song of thanksgiving and of love. So just to clara help clarify that section there. So we are going to receive uh, guidance on how to, where to go and what to do um, to, to receive what our body needs. And the needs of the body will become less and less by the time because we have, we have letting go of idols and of um, things that we think are helping the body. And we're starting to turn more and more within. Um, and our, we travel lighter or thing, our life becomes simpler. But we still need things while we're here. And those things will be provided through listening to guidance and being guided on you might be guided to give something to someone or give some money or give time or give something that you have that somebody needs and they might be guided to give those things to you when you need them as you need them and so therefore trust trusting is that we need to trust and not try to plan for ourselves we can't see what each day is going to bring in as we need it um, so the form of the answer, if given by God, will suit your need as you see it. So any need that you have at the time, something will come in to help you with that. Now, this is merely an echo of the reply of his voice. So what happens is until we're hearing the song, the echo is the Holy Spirit's voice helping us because what's happening is where we are mind, we're not body, right? And the mind thinks it's a body. So it's we need to um, have things for the body. And so God being the song of love, creating us as love, doesn't know of any idea in our mind that we've chosen to look at ourselves as a body and that comes from the guilt so God, this is sort of another way that God can't come in and know what we've made as the sun as the creation of love so the echo is more like the Holy Spirit coming in and to knowing where we're at and providing something in the dream that we think we need. So the things are going to be brought to us and we're going to be guided and have certain... Um, is just going to be when you're when you're connected to the Holy Spirit, you'll just trust and know that what you need and where you need to go, things will come to you in and they will come beautifully. He will show you 
you know, like for an example, he took me on a walk one day and he showed me all the blackberries growing wild. And he said, you could have a feast here for lunch on the blackberries. Because I've let go of all ideas about nutrition, um, what you need to eat, when you need to eat, how you need to eat. So all that stuff was being undone in my mind about, because I was, the egoic mind for me was all caught up in, um, it, you know, eating all these food groups and vitamins and you had to have this, you know, and you balance it all out. Had to wipe away all of those old past ideas and just show me something and he says just right here and now you can eat from this and passing fruit trees with some branches overhanging he says you can pick that and eat that so he's showing me that I have to release ideas about housing food wherever I'm going to be he's showing me to be free of old ideas around all those things and completely trust that each day what I need as the simple needs will be brought in so this is important it's I think it's called divine providence but it's something that you get into but you have to trust first you can't see it working unless you trust first so the echo is the one the echo of God's voice the Holy Spirit will help you while we're still believing we're a body um and so the the song of prayer there's no needs because you're not aware of being a body so and it's no use for anyone here to be living in the song of prayer because you just let go of the body you wouldn't feed it you wouldn't do anything it would just be let go of and that's where we are now so um it's better to choose to use the body and repurpose it to help others and to spread this message he needs messengers of peace so um this is what he's trying to describe here in this last two lines this is merely an echo of the reply of his voice so his voice is always love you're beautiful, you're holy, you're innocent, you know, I just love you and I bless you. And it's really not even words. It's just this, this love that's coming, this divine love that is showing up and trying to call you in, come back to me, you know, come, come home. And so the real sound is always a song of thanksgiving and of love. So the song of prayer is always gratitude thanksgiving and love they're mixed together the gratitude and the love is what takes you home so we'll continue reading thanks Shannon you cannot then ask for the echo it is the song that is the gift along with it come the overtones the harmonics, the echoes, but these are secondary. In true prayer, you hear only the song. All the rest is merely added. You have sought first the kingdom of heaven, and all else has indeed been given you. Yeah, so the voice, the echo that helps us. We're not asking for the echo. We're not going to spend our whole lives asking um, the Holy Spirit and doing forgiveness, although we do do that. But we're, that's not the goal, right? Then the goal of our lives is um, the way we get home is through forgiveness. But we don't say our goal of our life is, oh, I'm just going to be practicing forgiveness every day. That's what I want to do. We do it because the goal is the song, the peace of God, that beautiful love. So it's like, that's why he says you cannot then ask for the echo. If the gift is the song. So the, he means like what we want to be asking for 
it is sort of like the, the prayer of our heart is I want to be back with you, God. I want to be in that love. I want to just be bathed in the love of God. I want to be like, you know, just in the essence of God's love. That's where I want to be because we've already seen that there's nothing here that will, in this world that brings us any happiness or peace truly so we, we're encouraged to let go of the things that we've made and come back to God the secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need to ask for the specific is much the same as to look on sin and then forgive it also in the same way in prayer you overlook your specific needs as you see them and let them go into God's hands. There they become your gifts to him, for they tell him that you would have no gods before him, no love but his. What could his answer be but your remembrance of him? Can this be traded? for a bit of trifling advice about a problem of an instant's duration? God answers only for eternity. But still, all little answers are contained in this. So all the little answers, all the little things that um, help me with this, they're all these little answers, but he's really saying that the true prayer is just just letting go and saying you know all these things that I'm wanting or desiring or let let them go I only want you God he's asking us to only have a desire for him and his love I'm, I'll just read the uh, next paragraph and then I'll get Shannon to read on prayer is a stepping aside a letting go a quiet time of listening and loving it should be it should not be confused with supplication of any kind now supplication the meaning of supplication is asking or begging earnestly or humbly so we're not going to get into begging or asking we are going to be stepping aside, letting go, listening and loving and nothing to do with begging. It should not be confused with supplication of any kind because it is a way of remembering your holiness. Why should holiness entreat? Being fully entitled to everything love has to offer. And it is to love you go in prayer. Prayer is an offering, a giving up of yourself to be at one with love. There is nothing to ask because there is nothing left to want. That nothingness becomes the altar of God it disappears in him. Shannon. This is not a level of prayer that everyone can attain as yet. Those who have not reached it still need your help in prayer because their asking is not yet based upon acceptance. Help in prayer does not mean that another mediates between you and God, but it does mean that another stands beside you and helps to raise you up to him. One who has realized the goodness of God prays without fear, and one who prays without fear cannot but reach him. He can therefore also reach his son, wherever he may be, in whatever form he may seem to take.
praying to Christ in anyone is true prayer because it is a gift of thanks to his father. To ask that Christ be but himself is not an entreaty. It is a song of thanksgiving for what you are. Herein lies the power of prayer. It asks nothing and receives everything. This prayer can be shared because it receives for everyone. To pray with one who knows that this is true is to be answered. Perhaps the specific form of resolution for a specific problem will occur to either of you. It does not matter which. Perhaps it will reach both if you are genuinely attuned to one another. It will come because you have realised that Christ is in both of you. That is its only truth. So we're going to do a meditation now <clears throat> based on some of the words here and some of the ways in which he's instructed about true prayer. What I'd like you to do um, is just to, first of all, just say, I'll give you a minute to be silent. I want you to say a willingness prayer. I'm willing to give this a go. You might want to do something where you release any fear that you feel about this meditation. Adjust your prayer, your prayer of your heart. So I'll just be quiet for a few for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go through a particular meditation, um, probably about 10 or 15 minutes. I won't speak all the way through it, but I'll lead you in. And if this feels, if you feel you're not ready, as he says, this is a level of prayer that, ev that, that everyone can this is not a level of prayer that everyone can attain as yet. It's okay if you feel, I can't do this. So if you feel that you can't do it, you can just mute me and you can just stay, stay with the group. And I encourage you just to do a thank you meditation where you just say, thank you. I have everything. Thank you. I have everything. Thank you. So you don't have to tell anyone that you've opted for the second meditation. That's fine. So this is a surrendering meditation where we surrender to God. So if you can, if you Either if you want to stay sitting up, I just encourage you to open up your arms and your hands and sort of uncross your legs. Feel your, the stance of your body open, open up. If you can, lie down. If you've got an area, just lie on the floor. Try to open up. You can put your arms out really wide. Open your legs. And if you can, sort of like push up your chest, like really, like a really surrendered, like sort of 
So I'll give you a few minutes to get comfortable. If you want to remain sitting, that's fine. Just feel, I want you to feel in an open, an open stance where you're open. So we, this, the meditation is we are giving ourselves, a giving up of yourself to be at one with love, a giving up of yourself to be one with God, a giving up. So close your eyes and you can repeat my words that I say to yourself. You can say them out loud or you can just say them in your mind. I am giving myself to you, God. I give myself to you. I'm giving myself. I surrender. I let go of everything. I let go of everything. I want your love. That is the only thing. I want. I let go. I let go of everything here. I let it go. I give myself. I give it all to you. I want only your beautiful love. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Feel yourself letting everything go. Feel the world drop away. Feel everything, your life, your body, the world. Let it all go, open up and just call to God, I want only you, I surrender everything, I surrender myself, I surrender, I let go, I hold on to nothing.
take me, God. I'm yours. Take me. Take me. I'm yours.
okay just very gently coming out of that You probably don't want to come out of it. <laughs> so you can probably see how beautiful it is to do that type of surrendering meditation prayer. He calls it a prayer. And it's right here in, in his words. Prayer is an offering, a getting up with yourself to be at one with love. There is nothing to ask because there is nothing left to want. That nothingness becomes the altar to God. It disappears in him. So all the little things we think we want disappear. So I'm going to stop the recording now. And uh, so anyone listening to this back, thank you. It's beautiful. I hope you've had a beautiful experience. And... I just would like to get any, if there's any feedback from anyone, would like to give it. I'm going to stop the recording now.